Today we're going to be talking about an engine that is made in China. A lot of people are scared of it, but it's starting to make its way over here into the U.S. Now, there's not a whole lot of information on this engine, only if you can read Russian uh, and Chinese. Um, I don't understand that. So a lot of your Amazon bikes right now are starting to come with an actual 250cc. Now, a lot of these engines, all they do is change the side covers. Um, X-Pro puts an X-Pro side cover on there. Um, KO puts their own KO side cover on this engine. It has a sight glass. GPX actually uses this engine. Um, and they are starting to come up in the world. And that particular engine is the same that I just mentioned across the board. And the one I'm going to be talking about today is very reliable. Um, see, back in the day, everybody put Honda on a pedestal because everything was made in Japan. And they said it's so great. Well, nowadays, a lot of those cheaper bikes... They're like made over there in China somewhere. I don't really care where stuff comes from. Um, the only thing I care is it has a little bit of reliability. Now, the particular engine that we're going to be talking about today is an air-cooled 250cc. And if you haven't checked out the video that I did, I actually built a custom bike with this particular engine. It is a true 250cc engine. And one thing I did like about it that it's air-cooled, and we'll go over that here in a minute, um, if you want to know a lot about this engine, um, I can do several videos on it, how to time it, how to adjust valves, um, how to tell if you have a true uh, Zongxin 250cc engine. But today we're going to go over the basic specs. I'm going to be talking about everything we did. I took a KLX 140 and I went ahead and put a Zongxin 250cc engine on it. And why did I do that? For one, I'm super short and I couldn't get a bike to fit me very well. And when I did, it was way out of my price range. You know, I don't have $11,000 to beat through the woods. Um, but this bike is very light and nimble, and it fit me really good. I just needed more power out of it. I put a big bore kit on it. It didn't do very well. Bigger carburetor and all that stuff. So that's what led me to the Zongxing 250. Um, uh, one guy did it. Um, he made it work. And then I started looking into the engines. Everybody's like, yeah, they're super reliable. They're air-cooled. I'm like, this is the engine that I need. So I ended up getting the engine, shoving it in the KLX 140 frame. It put in pretty easily, actually. The wiring harness, got a whole new wiring harness and put on it. And uh, $600 later, I had a working enduro bike. Now, what I like about why I chose the Zongxin 250, it is air-cooled and it has ports um, to make it cool better, which I'll show you here in a little bit, and the fins are bigger. So I have to worry about radiators. I don't have to worry about the cap blowing off. I don't have to worry about tipping the bike over and losing antifreeze when I bust a radiator. That's why I like the Zongxing 250. First off, there's a lot of scams out there and make sure you order it from the right place. You can get the engine right now from X-Pro, but make sure the serial number does match. What you're looking for is ZS172. That's how you know you have the true Zongxing 250cc um, uh, engine. So ZS, you know, stands for Zongxing. The first number means one cylinder, and the 72 means the diameter of the cylinder, which is in millimeters. And then off to the side, you're going to see a 3A. That's the engine you want for an off-road bike. Now, why did I choose this engine? Um, it's very reliable. There's not a whole lot you got to do to it. Out of the box, maybe adjust the valves a little bit slap a 30 millimeter carburetor on this thing and break it in and you have an engine that pulls super hard in the woods now is this some kind of motocross engine no but they do have different engines for that application like i said i wanted to stay old school with the air cool um, and stuff like that but as you can see this particular engine has unique features the head has really wide fins on it right so it really catches that air and if you look on the front, there's a big port that goes through the front, clear to the back, and it comes through the side, and that lets air through there to cool the head. I can give you tons more information on this engine if you would like. I'd like to make several videos on it, but I just wanted to introduce you to this engine because it's starting to turn a little bit of heads over here in America. You can get big bore kits for it, um, and like a four valve head, but you're only gonna gain like one or two horsepower um, you can have a little bit of bragging rights with that, but you can do all kinds of configurations with the head because this, the bottom of this engine is used for everything and they just stack whatever they want on top of it. 
basically. It's kind of like a universal engine. So they have an air-cooled and a liquid-cooled version. Uh, they have all kinds of versions uh, versions of this engine. They have um, a counterbalanced engine, which that's not really for my application. That's going to be for a street bike application because it's a little bit more tamer because you have, have it balanced internally and it's going to slow you down a little bit. Now when we go to specs, everybody wants to know the horsepower. Oh, this website says this, this website says this. Straight out of the Zongxing factory, um, they did mention that the American people always say this engine pushes 20 horsepower. Um, and he flat out said that the true horsepower out of this engine is actually 19. So he said by doing what I did, I should be around 20 to 21 horsepower by Portland polishing it and putting a 30 millimeter carburetor. And if it's tuned correctly, I should have about 20, 21 horsepower out of this engine, which is plenty enough for a Kel X140. Uh, mine is a big wheel edition. You know, it's got the 21 front, the 18 rear. Uh, um, it's plenty enough power. It pulls the front wheel, no problem. And what I like about it, that it's got that snappy power or I can lug it. Um, it's a really nice engine. It's very reliable. Um, you can get parts for it. You just got to know where to get it, and it's going to take you a little bit longer. So what I recommend doing is when you get a little extra cash is go ahead and get a different set of clutches because the ones in it work pretty good, um, but you know eventually they're going to burn out. If you guys want links to that stuff, I can give them to you. But go ahead and get you a set of clutches. Stay on top of those valve adjustments. Um, and honestly, when you get a little extra cash, I'd go ahead and just get a head and rings and uh, pistons and stuff while you can because every day you know they're evolving they're always making something else but right now this engine is a big kick right now and everybody's getting one to do motor swaps with it people even put them on like street bikes and stuff and i want to jump on the bandwagon and build me a custom bike for me that fits me really good and helps me uh, ride a lot better and this bike has i have been riding it and it does, has done very well um the first thing that i've done when i got this engine is i changed the oil uh, a lot of people said don't do that, but I went ahead and changed the oil and I went ahead and adjusted the valves. Mine were right on point, so it just depends probably who worked on it that day, but you always want to go through your engine. So I just want to introduce this engine to the internet in English because a lot of it's in Russia and Chinese. Uh, so there'll be a lot more on this engine. I just want to introduce it to you, and if you're interested in it, I can definitely give you more info on top dead center valve adjustments so on and so on. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you guys next time.